Today I'm going to uh, disassemble a single stage uh, air regulator and show you how it works, or at least attempt to show you how it works. Uh, it's a real simple mechanism, but it's not, things like this aren't always simple to explain. Uh, for those of you who don't know what an air regulator is, uh, this is something that down regulates high pressure into low pressure for your air tools, sandblasters, uh, plasma cutters, there's a, you know, machine tools, there's a hundred different uses for these things. Um, so, let's dis disassemble this and see how this works. It's just a retaining ring. Well, actually it doesn't retain anything, it just looks nice, I guess. Um, I have this everything pre-loosened up on this to make it a little bit easier and save time. Here is the pressure uh, adjustment assembly. You see how this works here. It, this locks in place unless, you, in case you have it on something that vibrates, like a air compressor, you don't want that drifting uh, on lower pressure. So you want to be able to lock it in place. That's important. Anyway, this thing works like a tube of chapstick. There's a pressure regulating spring in there. See how that comes up when you increase the air pressure and the opposite when you turn it back down. Well, that's a simple mechanism. What you have here is you have, uh, this turns while this nut stays in place in here and the nut moves up and pushes that spring out. So that's how that works. See how it's moved out now? Yeah, and those protrusions in here hold that hex nut captive so it can't turn, it forces it to move up or down. Okay, that's relatively simple. So what do we have next here? This is the diaphragm here. This is the probably one of the most important parts of a pressure regulator. This is what it'll, this is what uh, tells the air valve, the poppet valve, to open and close inside the uh, body of the regulator. And I'll tell you what that does next. And I'll show you the poppet valve here. This is the poppet valve. And it's just a valve that lets the air from the intake to the exhaust at certain pressures. And it's in it, its operation is told what to do by this diaphragm. Okay, and you see here it's just a rubber seal and goes on that seat down there. And what that does there is when air comes in here at 100 psi, it comes up into this body here, and this stays closed because of the spring here. It stays closed, and so the air can't come out here until you push the valve open. So the key to this is having the diaphragm push the valve open first of all. So the diaphragm actually has two purposes. One is to translate force from the spring into the poppet valve stem to open it up. See how it opens up like that from the bottom stem comes through opens like that. Well what there's a little divot here where that stem goes in the diaphragm. When you push in the diaphragm it opens up that valve. That's the diaphragm's first function. And of course, how does the pop valve know when to open? Well, you see, this is push that spring pushes on the diaphragm, pushes on the stem, pushes the pop valve open. So, the second uh, function it has, okay, is to tell the pop valve when to close again when it's at the proper pressure. Well, how does it do that? Uh, what happens is whenever you're whenever you increase this spring pressure here it starts to push this poppet valve open so your 100 psi starts flooding into this top chamber and when this is open that air pressure is allowed to go down through the poppet valve past it and the seat and go to the exhaust side okay that's fine so you got it open. So what's to keep all the air, the 100 psi, from just flying through the exhaust line? Well, what happens is <clears throat> when the air pressure starts to get higher on this side, is some of it starts to bleed from this chamber into the diaphragm chamber through this little hole here. There's a little port there. You can see it right there, a little pinhole. And what that does is that increases the pressure in this lower chamber. It pushes on the diaphragm, which wants to make it push out of the housing, but it can't because it's held captive by this assembly. But what happens is that diaphragm pushes on backwards on this spring and counteracts the spring pressure. And when that happens, this poppet valve is allowed to close back up with this spring right here. This spring is much, much weaker, and the only function it really has is just to keep that poppet valve in place 
during the entire spectrum of its operation. So that's pushed back in place. Okay, so now it shuts off, let's say at 10 or 20 PSI, because I screwed the spring up a little bit. A little bit, okay, we're at 20 PSI. Let's say if we want to take it up to 40 or 50 PSI, what happens? So we turn this up a little bit. That in turn opens the pop valve back up and lets more air in. Okay, and air is coming in, air is coming in past the pop valve, coming out through here, and the pressure is raising in the exhaust line. As it's raising, it's the pressure, some of the air is bleeding off in here again, same as before, pushing on this diaphragm even more now and pushing against the spring. When it gets up to 40 PSI, it pushes on the spring enough and it allows this spring up here, this return spring, to push the poppet valve back down. So that's the basic operation of a single stage regulator. The one thing that I did notice about this, this has a unique poppet valve in it. Instead of just being a solid piece that uh, is being acted on by the diaphragm and the return spring, this one has a built-in piston in it. Now, well that has a built-in piston and also is ported from the top to the center here, or about center. And what that is, is when you put this inside and seated, that hole, there you see there's a little hole in that stem right there, a little pinhole. And that is in the exhaust side. And that's the same side that sees the pressure that, that pushes the diaphragm in or out to, to or well, pushes the diaphragm out to push on this regulating spring. Now, why would they put a hole in this poppet valve? Well, <clears throat> what it does is, since it sees the pressure, the air is ducted up through, up to the, through this piston head, and it goes into this, well, you see this retaining cap here has a cylinder in it and that fits in there, it seals in place. Since it's a piston, this uh, cylinder pressure rises to the same pressure that you have in the exhaust side and that also pushes this out. Now that has a couple functions. First function it has is it counteracts the diaphragm, well actually it works with the diaphragm and counteracts the regulator pressure. So when it, when it moves out, it moves with the, the uh, diaphragm and helps to close the spring, or helps to move the spring back to close the poppet valve. Also, the air pressure behind it as it's pushing also helps to close and seal this poppet valve against the seat in this body. So it has a couple functions. It's a neat design how they incorporated that. Um, so <clears throat> I don't think all single stage comp or, uh, regulators have that, but it's certainly a a unique part of this design and it also it has the function of helping the regulator counteract the spring pressure because it gives you just a little tiny bit more of surface area for the uh, air pressure to work on. So that's just a, a little supplemental part of this disassembly here. Uh, also the one thing that's interesting about this too is this is a reversible regulator so in case you have an airline coming from the left or the right, now they don't tell you this in the instructions. Actually, I don't remember instructions coming with this. They just sent you a box of the regulator and said good luck. <clears throat> so anyway, what's interesting about this too is you'll notice this side's identical to this side. One's just dirtier than the other. Well, the reason for that is, is in case you have an airline coming in from one side or the other, and this isn't oriented the proper the proper way, you can turn this around, you know, to put your gauge face wherever you need it, which is pretty cool. And I didn't know that until I disassembled it. Uh, but I thought you would find that interesting, and also it, it might help you when you go to clean one of these things out, so you know what to expect. So uh, some, consider subscribing to my channel and giving this a thumbs up. I uh, always appreciate that. It helps me get my videos out there. And until next video, I'll see you later.